Hello, brothers and sisters from Sacred Heart Parish in Gladwin. This is Father Marcel Portelli. Well, as promised, I'm going to be making some quick videos showing the uh, goings-on of the renovation. Obviously, the church is closed now. I'm sure you all know that. But um, uh, just because uh, we can't be having people go in for obvious safety and other reasons, uh, that doesn't mean I can't show you what's, what's going on. And so I plan on, on making a series of videos, informal videos, not edited or certainly no special effects. Um, just a quick uh, video every now and then to show you what's what's going on and to satisfy your curiosity and to give you uh, an update, okay? So uh, this is gonna be the first one of these videos and let's go in and see what's happening to our church. Did I unlock the door here? You're seeing this without any editing. Okay, and right away we can see some changes. You turn on the lights here. All right, that's, lights are always good. Let's go now into the sacristy and see what's going on here. And, uh, okay, that door's unlocked. It should have been locked, but here we are. And the sacristy is pretty much the same. A little disheveled because we've taken a few things over to the uh, activity center, such as the altar servers, albs, and so forth and so on. But for the most part, the sacristy is going to be unchanged. Um, it's not going to be renovated. It's not really part of the renovation. So let me turn on the lights now. We'll go into the main church, the main body of the church. And... Turn them all on, and we'll go through this door here, and voila, you can see here a big change right, right, right away. It's actually a bit jarring to see it like this. You see the altar there and the ambo, these are made of stone, it's going to take some time, of course, to remove these. Uh, the the uh, the altar, you can see right here, uh, this is where the saint's relics stone was kept. And this was installed presumably back, back when the altar was, was new. And these relics, um, traditionally all Catholic altars have saint's relics in them because when the priest kisses the altar at the beginning of Mass, technically he's kissing the altar stone. And the, and the saints' relics uh, are important because in the early days of the church, many times uh, altars and indeed entire churches were built over the tombs of saints. And that's a connection to our, our past, especially with the martyrs. So the relics that were in this altar are, of course, saved, and uh, they're all locked away safely for right now. And they will be installed in the new altar uh, when that time comes, okay? So let's take a look here in the back of the half wall. I should mention, of course, the half wall will be uh, removed um, as part of the renovation. And the half wall removal will certainly give us a lot more elbow room. It's always been hampering us here in the sanctuary. So back here, uh, we used to keep a lot of storage, a lot of shelves uh, with candles and linens and all kinds of bric-a-brac. Uh, these have all been removed. We also had in this corner the fire cabinet where we kept all of the incense and the charcoal and the matches and all that fun stuff. Uh, this area here used to be a storage area for seat, extra seating. Those all have all been removed. The server's chairs, the priest chairs have all been removed, of course, and taken over to the uh, to the activity center. And by the way, uh, all of the uh, carpeting that you see here is going to be removed. And rather than having carpeting, uh, we're going to be having a very nice porcelain tile that mimics the look of marble. Um, I'd, love, I'd love to say we're getting authentic Carrera marble from Italy, uh, but that's not going to happen on our budget. So we're getting porcelain tile that, that if you were, weren't an expert, you may not even know that it's not marble. And the idea is, of course, that the sanctuary 
which is where the Blessed Sacrament is and where the uh, consecration takes place, should be an elevated uh, part of part of the church. Not elevated uh, simply in terms of altitude. Of course, that's part of it too. That's why we have it on several steps, but also elevated in terms of its nobility and its elegance. And so that's going to be part of the, of the design. It's very jarring, of course, not to see people in here, not just the pews, of course, but the people are missing. And, and of course, the Blessed Sacrament is missing for the last, um, I think, about four years now. Uh, we had the tabernacle here, and it's, it's, um, it really makes the church empty. And it's, I, I, it's hard to even call it a church without the Blessed Sacrament or without the people here. So, but in any case, uh, the half wall, like I said, will be removed very soon. This, this room here is uh, currently, anyways, going to serve as our storage room. Let me turn on some lights here. And you can see many of, the, many of the items that were contained or stored behind the half wall are now here in the cabinets and the lockers. And I know it's a bit disheveled, but we had to make some space very quickly. And this will all be cleaned up, of course, as part of the renovation. Many of the things that you see here, including the decorations and the furnishings, will all be reinstalled back into the, the body of the church when we get to that point. You turn off the lights here. As the pastor, I'm always going around turning off lights, <laughs> saving money. All right, so let's take a walk here. And even though the Blessed Sacrament is no longer there, it, it, the altar is still there, and so I, I, I do a bow out of respect for the altar. And you see here the church in its pretty much denuded form. All of the furnishings, anything that wasn't bolted down, and even many things that have been bolted down, such as the pews, most notably, have all been removed. And this carpeting that you see here is all going to be removed, and we're going to be exposing, probably for the first time in, I don't know, 40 years or, or, or thereabouts, uh, the terrazzo, the terrazzo that, that, that underlies it. Of course, this all needs to be polished, but it's going to be very, very attractive looking when it's all done. So the the flooring in the sanctuary is going to be different than the flooring in the nave. This this part here, the church, is called the nave. And this part here is called the sanctuary. The, the sanctuary flooring should be of higher quality than that of the nave. It should be different and also of higher quality to remind us of the distinctiveness and the distinction of what happens here in the sanctuary. Obviously, the whole church is holy ground. It's all blessed ground. Uh, but the Holy of Holies is here in the sanctuary. And, and of course, we would have the tabernacle there. And so the, the floor should be different and of higher quality than, than what we have in the nave. Although, of course, it should all be nice and elevated too. The wall here is looking very blank. Uh, the other wall here is the counterpart wall is looking very blank too. Uh, everything's been removed. Um, it's all going to be looking very nice once we get it all painted and statuary put in place. But for right now, um, I guess we have to break a few eggs to, to make breakfast, right? Everything's very denuded. It's actually very forlorn looking, but we have to keep in mind the long-term uh, goal here. The long-term goal is a, a beautiful church, an inviting church, a welcoming church. And one that uh, that that uh, encourages reverence and prayer. That, that's why we're here, right? To, to help bring people to Christ. And the ch the building, of course, is not the church. The people are the, is a church, but a, a, a good and worthy and holy looking building is good because it elevates the mind, elevates the soul, which is really one of the functions of a Catholic church. It's not just to keep the elements off our heads. Let's go back into the narthex, and you can see here uh, pretty much anything that hasn't been bolted down has been removed. The closets have been pretty much emptied out and uh, everything taken over to the activity center. Let's go upstairs now and get a view from the loft. Let me turn on the lights here. Yeah, it helps.
This carpeting is going to be removed as well. And by the looks of it, it needs to be removed. It's kind of a safety hazard, all that rippling. So these pews are going to be renovated as well. And thank you to all the people who have sponsored a pew. Thank you very much. And uh, I know you're going to be proud of, proud of that. And by the way, the railing here in the loft has been removed. It's going to be a replace of something a little bit more elegant than what was there, which was galvanized pipe. <laughs> I think the, the, the silver painted galvanized pipe is going to be replaced with something a little bit more um, visibly pleasing and probably more up to code as well. Uh, in addition, uh, the loft here, I mean, this is before my time, so I don't know, but I'm sure originally when the church was built that the choir and the organ were up here. Maybe some of the uh, older members can tell me. But the reason why it's called the choir loft is because this is where the choirs were originally. Uh, the, the original thinking of the church is that choirs should be elevating the people by their music, like the angels singing from on high. Uh, not, not so much to be seen, but to, be ele to elevate the rest of us by the beauty of their music. And so you can see the organ has been removed, and the organ has been removed not just because we needed to get out of the way, but because the organ is going to be put up here. And pretty much where I'm pointing the camera right now is where the organ is going to be placed. Uh, we're not planning on getting a new organ. Again, that's something beyond the budget that we have. But the organ and, and the choir and the, uh, the microphones, the music stands, and all the other accoutrements that they use are going to be placed up here. We're still going to have seating up here for probably in the neighborhood of 80 people, maybe even more. But the choir and the organ are, are going to take up the central area up here. Let's take a look at the, the body of the church from up here. Yeah, wow, look at that. We're planning on keeping the chandeliers. Uh, the chandeliers, um, I'm, I'm guessing they're original, and, and they work just fine. They're actually quite nice looking, but we're gonna be replacing the, the lighting elements. The two chandeliers in the very front of the church have uh, LED lights, and the other ones have fluorescence, and you can kind of tell that uh, the fluorescence are dimmer. But we're gonna be replacing all of them with LEDs, which not only produce smoother and more, uh, I guess, uh, less harsh light, but also they're gonna be consistent from one chandelier to the other. Um, in addition, they're very, very energy friendly, even compared to the compact fluorescent lights that are there right now. One of the things we're also planning to do is to uh, bring the chandeliers down and clean them out. Uh, who knows how long it's been since they've been cleaned. And also to replace the uh, the lenses. Uh, you see the lenses there are a bit dull and even dis discolored. I'm not sure where <laughs> we're gonna find uh, material to, to replace those lenses. Um, that's gonna be, uh, I guess, some Google searching. Um, I'm not even sure where to begin to find lenses for those, but we'll figure it out. Maybe it's just a matter of cleaning, cleaning them out. That, that's all we need. Um, interestingly, interestingly enough, the two chandel the, the three chandeliers here up in the choir loft don't even have lenses, and I have no idea what happened to them. Uh, but you can see the, the compact fluorescent lamps and they're uh, pretty much exposed. So those should all have lenses. All right, let's go back down from up here. make sure to turn off the lights okay again pretty eerie here seeing everything gone I'm a big fan of literature racks in the back of churches and all of our racks are gone they'll come back like everything else all right so 
You can see the walls here. The walls are the exposed center block is going to be covered. The stations of the cross you can see have been removed. Uh, hopefully you can see it in the camera. The outlines of the stations of the cross there. Uh, we have um, acquired an antique set of stations of the cross from another church el elsewhere in the diocese that had been in storage as far as I know for many, many years. Uh, but we acquired them and the, the whole set, of course, and they're going to be uh, put on the walls and they are really going to add a lot of color and visual uh, appeal to the walls, which are you know, they, they've never really been too too appealing because of the cinder block. But the, the, even the stations of the cross that we had, they, they were okay, but they were kind of small for the walls. And um, I think you're going to really like the new ones when you see them. All right. A lot of cables and things. All going to be cleaned up. All these cables are going to be rerouted. These are microphone cables. That you see there, microphone for the choir. Those are all going to be rerouted to the choir loft all the way up there. And we're going to run them along the walls into the amplifier and the sacristy. All right. I think that's all I have for you today, everybody. So I will... Uh... Ah, one more thing I should show you here. <laughs> uh, this is where... The holy oils were kept, a very simple uh, shelf, kind of out of sight and frankly out of mind, a very unadorned little shelf. And, and uh, the holy oils, of course, should be placed in a, in a, in a worthy display case, something that um, denotes you know, the honor that we should give the holy oils. So we have a very nice display case uh, made out of wood that's going to be mounted. I'm not exactly sure where it's going to be mounted. But it, it's very nice, and it also protects them, the uh, the oils from from easy spillage, which is, which almost happened a couple times here. All right, so I think that's kind of it for for today. Um, let me just mention before signing out that um, I'm I'm going to be taking a number of these videos off and on as we go along, and uh, I'm probably not going to be producing a flock note or sending out a flock note to inform you every time I produce a video because I don't want to overwhelm you. Uh, many people may not be interested in getting a lot of these updates. And so um, I will occasionally put out a flock note, especially if there's a um, significant thing happening in, in the renovation and I video record it. But for the most part, I won't be. And so if you want to uh, see the videos, you want to get all the updates, the best thing to do is simply to subscribe to the YouTube channel here, and then also click on the bell icon to be automatically notified when your video uploads, and you will get a, a notice, and you can then watch the videos. It'll be interesting to see several months from now uh, how this is all going to be looking different. Uh, that, that's what keeps me going. Uh, this, this frankly, can be uh, very, very sad. It's very sad looking the way it is right now, of course, like I said. Not just because the pews are gone, but everything else, everything is gone. The people are, are not here, and of course, and the Blessed Sacrament is gone. But we got to keep our eyes on the long-term prize, and that is uh, a renovation that's been a long time coming, and thanks to the prayers and the financial sacrifices of many, many people, is going to see fruition by the end of this year, hopefully before Advent, okay? So, Father Marcel Portelli, Thanking all of you for, for viewing. Again, subscribe and click on the bell icon to be notified of future videos. And God be with you all.